Today I'll teach you how to add fractions with different denominators fast, no calculator needed, even faster than a calculator, and if you stick to the end, I'll show you how to add three fractions with different denominators fast. All right, so let's get straight into it. All right, three quarters plus two of five. So when we're adding fractions with different denominators, you're taught find a common denominator, transform that fraction into that denominator, and then that one as well. Now that process is pretty straightforward, but what I find a lot of students struggle with is finding that common denominator and then having to times top and bottom by what, that, what number, right? So we've got a much faster method. Ready? So we're gonna use cross multiplying. So how it works is you're gonna times these together. That's your new denominator. And then to get what's on top, it's gonna to be that times that. So when we're adding fractions with different denominators, we're gonna cross multiply the first numerator with the opposite denominator, 15, plus second numerator with opposite denominator, two times four, eight. Right, and then to get the bottom, we just times the bottoms together. So we get 23 on 20. And for now, we'll just leave it as an improper fraction, but you can pretty easily convert that to a mixed numeral if you want, right? So let's look at a, another example. Um, two on seven plus four on nine, okay? So again, we're gonna cross multiply. And what you can do when you get faster, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do this example. So we're, again, we're gonna times these together. So that's seven times nine is 63. Then we cross multiply the top. So two times nine is 18. Four times seven is 28. So now all we're gonna do now is 18 plus 28, 46. Now as a note I didn't mention before, what you're gonna do is also is check that these numbers have no common factors to cancel out. Now how do you know if you're gonna have a common factor to cancel out? It depends on these denominators. If seven and nine have a common, highest common, sorry, common factor other than one, then that means these numbers here will have something to cancel out. So let's actually look at an example of adding fractions with different denominators when they have something in common. All right, so let's look at, uh, so one on six plus three on eight. Now if we use cross multiply, it times the six and the eight, so 48. Then we're gonna cross the numbers together. So one times eight is eight, three times six is 18. Now, I'm gonna show you a different trick. So you could just add the fractions and then um, divide it out. So actually I'll do it for this example and I'll show you. So then that's 26 on 48. So then you notice they have a common factor. Now, the trick to finding what the common factor is, is here, right? You find the HCF, so the highest common factor of the two numerators, which is just two. So that's the height, that's what you gotta divide out. So then you just divide 26 by two and then 48 by two. So that gives you 13 on 24. All right, I'm gonna show you a different trick. What if these numbers are too high across multiply? Or then divide, right? So let's say we have four on nine plus two on 15, okay? So, so normally, if we do cross multiply method, we're gonna times these together. But how many would you know nine times 15 straight away? Now there are tricks to do it, but let, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna write it as nine times 15, right? But then four times 15, right? Well, that one's not too bad to work at, that's 60. And then two times nine is 18. So the trick here is instead of adding them together, working at this and then dividing out, what we're going to do, so the highest common factor of 9 and 15 is 3. So what we're going to do instead is, before we add and times, we're going to divide, right? So what we, that means is we divide each number by 3, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to divide each number by 3. Why would we do that here? It's because it's easier to divide smaller numbers by 3 instead of having to add 16, uh, 60 and 18. Right, because 60 divided by three, that's easy, that's just 20. 18 divided by three, that's just six. Now, if we added 60 and 18, that's 78. Can you do 78 divided by three really quickly? 
Probably not. So it's always easier to divide it when it's smaller. Now instead of having to work out what 9 times 15 is, I can actually, instead of doing that way, I can do 15 divided by 3. Right? Because with times and divide, we can interchange the order, right? Because they're, they're the same in order of operation. Because 15 divided by 3, that's just 5. 9 times 5 is 45. Right? Much quicker than doing 9 times 15. Well, what's that? That's 135, right? And then 135 divided by 3, well, I doubt you can do that quickly, right? So, much quicker to divide. And then we just simplify, we get 26 on 45. That's our final answer, nice and simple, right? So this process, when the number's getting really high, is to divide out each term by the highest common factor. And even the denominator, don't even do the product, 9 times 15. If you, if you can't do that product straight away, write it down and then divide the higher number because it makes the product. Because if you did 9 divided by 3, 3 times 15, that one's actually tricks some people. That's not easy. It's easy as 9 times 5. So always divide the higher denominator by the highest common factor or make this product much easier. Right? So I've just shown you how to add fractions with different, different denominators fast. Let's step it up. Let's look at how to add three fractions with different denominators fast. Right? And spoiler alert, we use the same process, but in a slightly different way. Alright, so I'm going to add three fractions with different denominators. Let's just look at a simple one. Alright, what we do is we times each denominator together, right? Same process here, we times each denominator together. So 2 times 3, 6 times 4, 24. But then what do we do on top? Because normally if there's no 4, then we just cross multiply. But because there's an extra fraction, what you're going to do is you're going to do numerator 1 times each other denominator. So it'll be 1 times 3 times 4. What's that? 12, right? 1 times 3 is 3 times 4 is, let's put our here, 12. What do we do in the middle? Same thing. So whatever numerator you have, you just times it with every other denominator that's not there. Right? So it'll be 1 times 2, 1 times 4. Right, so 1 times 2 is 2, times 4 is 8. And then the same thing with the third denominator. Times that, and then times that. So 1 times 3 is 3, times 2 is 6. So then, if we add it all together, we'll get 26 on 24. And again, we've got to make sure can we cancel out any common factors, right? Because you notice here how 2 and 4 have a highest common factor of 2, that means, so here I have a HCF of 2, so that's what I have to divide out, 13 on 12. Or again, I could have done the same trick here, right? I could divide each number by 2, but because the numbers are small, that process is longer. So I only use that this method when the numbers are really high at times, right? Let's look at another example of adding three fractions with different denominators. Let's make it a little harder. 2 on 5 plus 3 quarters plus, um, so 4 on 9. Ooh, here we go. Alright, so let's, let's see how I would do it in an example. I won't write this down, so what I would do, I'd do 5 times 4, 20, 20 times 9. Well, that's pretty easy, that's just 180. Right, because 9 times 2 is 18. Then, be 2 times 4, 8 times 9, 72. Okay, then 3 times 5, 15 times 9. So this is where it gets a little tricky. But 15 times 9, 135. So I'll have future videos on how to deal with timesing numbers a lot quicker. And then plus 4 times 4, 16 times 5. So 16 times 5, that's 80. So then, I'll add all these numbers together. Now, when we're adding numbers, the best way is to add numbers in the order that's easiest, right? This is not easy, but this one's it. Like, for 72 plus 80 is 152, and 152 plus 135 is 287. Right, so it's a bit easier to add 
the numbers um, that are easier first, so that's a different video. Right, so again, just showing you how to add three fractions to different numbers pretty quick, right? Because if you have to type that into a calculator, that's going to get annoying, right? But we don't have to rely on a calculator, right? We want to add fractions to different denominators fast, not using a calculator. And why is that important? Well, the faster you can do this without a calculator and using your head, will make doing all kinds of math problems faster. So if you learn to rely less on a calculator and more on your head, you'll get a lot smarter at maths, right? You'll be able to do math problems a lot quicker. Okay, so if you enjoyed this um, tutorial on how to add fractions with different denominators fast, and even how to add three fractions with different denominators fast, make sure to give us a like below and comment what you'd like future videos on, and make sure to subscribe to get future cool videos, tricks and tips like this. As a final note, this process can be applied to four or five fractions, right? Okay, so if you want to add four or five fractions pretty quick, you can do it this process. But if the numbers are getting high, especially in the teens, then that's where I might consider a calculator, okay? Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this how to add fractions with different denominators tutorial.